a surprising turn of events, the sport compact car segment seems to be absolutely thriving in a way that makes it feel more like 2002 than 2022. There's a new Civic Si, there's a new Golf GTI, there's even a new Subaru WRX, but there's also one other alternative we shouldn't be quick to discount. You see, Volkswagen has updated its venerable Jetta GLI for 2022, and VW might just be onto something with their latest GTI with a trunk, as you will soon find out. The reason why I think the Jetta GLI is a bit slept on in the Sport Compact segment is because, well, there are some big heavy hitters as far as name brand recognition is concerned. Of course, when you think of Volkswagen, you think of the Golf GTI, the hot hatchback. And that's really one of the vehicles responsible for starting the idea of the Sport Compact segment. The fact you can have a small practical car that is also quite sporty and fun to drive. So massive kudos to Volkswagen there. But there are other big players in the segment, like the Honda Civic Si that I mentioned in the intro. And the reason why I bring that up is I think that is the nearest competition, in my opinion, to the GLI. And it pains me to say that after recently having driven the new Civic Si, I came away very underwhelmed by that vehicle. And that's saying something because I'm a Honda fanboy. I own an old Honda Civic Si. So if Honda's not swaying me to upgrade to a new one, well, that's kind of a miss as far as I'm concerned. So what is Volkswagen doing right with the GLI that's causing me to become a fanboy of it? Well, let's start under the hood, for example. We have the venerable two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine, the EA888. In this guise, it produces 228 horsepower and a healthy 258 pound feet of torque. That's a good bit more power than the one and a half liter turbo four you get in the Honda Civic. But what's cool are the transmission choices. Now praise be a six speed manual is the standard transmission here and as a preacher of the hashtag save the manuals coalition that makes me a very happy boy indeed but the optional upgrade and the one in our tester here is a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission the dsg volkswagen has implemented and been refining this transmission for over a decade now and it shows it's a really good unit overall though it does have a few quirks that come with it. Now, having recently reviewed the high-performance Golf R with both the manual transmission and the DSG, I'm very acutely aware of what Volkswagen can do with the DSG when tuned right. And in my opinion, they left a little bit on the table with the GLI. It feels a bit lazy around town, which is disappointing because once you're up here on a winding road, of course, it can launch really hard and go bang, bang, bang through the gears very, very quickly. But at more sedate speeds, it does kind of feel a bit, well, dull. Of course, if you're a driving enthusiast, you should no doubt go for the six-speed stick and not think twice about it. It's definitely the more engaging of the two. This combination, though, with the DSG and this two-liter turbo four, I'm so impressed with the flexibility of this powertrain. EPA fuel economy ratings are 26 mpg city, 36 mpg on the freeway, and 30 mpg combined, which is solid for the performance you get out of this thing. As you might expect with the extra power over rivals like the Civic Si, this thing is quite a bit quicker. It does 0 to 60 in 6 seconds flat, and is limited to a mere 155 mile per hour top speed. And look at that, it just pulls so nicely. I mean, if you keep this thing between 2,000 and 6,000 revs, you're gonna be hauling ass on a winding road. There's no way around it. What's a bit funny is the soundtrack that accompanies this experience because the GLI, like other Volkswagen products, uses what's called the Sound Actor. That is a speaker that is mounted to the firewall and produces a sort of synthetic amplified engine note. Now, this is a configurable thing. You can turn it on or off, and um, I'm sort of so-so on it. I know some people hate the idea of synthetic engine noise. Some people are neutral about it. It's okay for me. The only hang-up is that the sound actor, when turned on to sport mode, because it creates a sort of reverbery, buzzy, four-cylinder noise, it actually does cause the dash to rattle a little bit, and I Googled it, and apparently this is a common problem Volkswagen has been dealing with. Oh well, I suppose the trade-off is that with the sound actor off, this is a very, very quiet vehicle, and so I guess it's better than nothing. 
While the powertrain overall is a definite plus to the GLI, especially over much of its competition, I think a real strong suit here is actually the chassis and the handling balance. Not only does the GLI have a helical limited slip front differential to help with the power down to the ground, but it also has Volkswagen's dynamic chassis control system. That means when you toggle between the drive modes here, this car actually utilizes adaptive dampers and notably changes the handling balance of this vehicle. You can kind of go from soft and comfy to pretty firm and pretty responsive and agile as a result. And I love that sense of duality and flexibility in an everyday family hauler like the GLI. And I bring that up because that's a feature that was actually in the old Civic Si that Honda took out of the new one to put in the more expensive Acura Integra, which is certainly disappointing. Another big perk when it comes to the GLI's handling dynamics, again, comes from the Volkswagen parts bin, as this vehicle actually inherits the brake setup from the previous Mark 7 Golf R. That means we have larger brakes than before, 13.4 inch vented rotors up front and 11.8 inch vented rotors out back, along with fatter calipers, which means that this thing can obviously handle plenty of braking abuse on your favorite winding road. What's quite interesting is that the base Jetta actually uses a simple torsion beam rear suspension, but for the GLI, they actually swap all that out and give you a fully independent multi-link setup instead, which further improves the handling and in my opinion, the comfort side of things, because that independent suspension allows the rear to articulate more freely over bumps and broken pavement. While Honda has gone ahead and decontented the new Civic Si and pumped the price for some reason, this Jetta GLI only comes one way, fully loaded in this Autobahn trim for 2022. That unfortunately means it's one of the more expensive propositions in this segment because they got rid of the base S trim. The base MSRP of a GLI is now 31,990 bucks. Though, stick with me here, I think it's good value for money because not only do you get more power and a great powertrain and those fancy adaptive dampers, but this interior is actually really, really solid. And I think I should pull over and show you a bit more about it. As of 2022, Volkswagen's pared down the number of trim levels of the GLI to just one, the top of the line Autobahn trim. That means for enthusiasts of the less expensive S model with its cool cloth seats, well, sorry, too bad. That means we have goodies like these leather seats, which are both heated and ventilated, as well as cool tech like wireless phone charging down here, wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto connectivity. That's all handled through this eight inch infotainment display, which mercifully was actually carried over from the previous Mark 7 Golf and not the same system found in the current Mark 8 Golf GTI and Golf R with its really clunky, touch-based interface. This system does rely on touch, but it also does have hard buttons and knobs, which is the right amount of redundancy to use while driving. This system is much better than what's actually in the new car, which is quite funny to say. The steering wheel has also been updated for 2022, which is a mixed bag because it looks cool. It's similar again to what you'd find in the GTI and Golf R, but that means it does come with these clunky capacitive touch inputs, which while driving can be frustrating to use. The big interior upgrade for 2022 is the inclusion of this 10 inch digital cockpit driver's display system. Now this technology originally debuted in Audi vehicles a couple of years ago, but has managed to trickle its way down into Volkswagen products. This is a configurable display with multiple views that I quite like. It feels very upscale in this experience and is much nicer than what you'd find in a Honda Civic Si, for example. Now, the reason why I bring up the Civic Si is the fact that that vehicle very much annoys me because Honda got rid of all the instrumentation in that car. It doesn't even have a coolant temp gauge anymore. Meanwhile, this Volkswagen between this digital display here and the infotainment setup will show you things like coolant temp, boost pressure, oil temp, G reading, the list goes on. I love that level of data available to the driver. Looking beyond the tech, the GLS interior is just quite nice overall. Now it does feel a bit too much black on black on black on black, which is a huge pet peeve of mine in any car, but it is punctuated with this nice red trim all throughout the interior. And the mixture of materials does feel pretty good in here. It also helps that it's six foot one. I can very comfortably sit behind myself in the back seats and the trunk is absolutely massive. That the Jetta GLI is a practical everyday car should really come as no surprise. So I think we need to go back on the road and talk about some more dynamics at play here. Despite Volkswagen calling the GLI a GTI with a trunk, it's interesting seeing where the two have diverged and how GLI does have its own unique personality. 
because the GLI soldiers on with some Mark 7 golf components rather than some Mark 8 golf components, it's actually all the better for it. To be honest, not having that infotainment system, which is absolutely terrible in the new GTI and Golf R in this GLI, is reason enough to buy this over the GTI. What helps seal the deal is that a comparable GTI Autobahn trim is almost $6,000 more than this GLI. Now granted that GTI Autobahn will have a few more niceties that you can't get in a GLI, like heated rear seats for example, though most enthusiasts will no doubt notice the power discrepancy between the two. The GTI gets an extra 20 horsepower and 20 pound foot of torque bump over this GLI. Though enterprising buyers will no doubt know just how tunable these engines are. And with a cheap ECU reflash, you will more than surpass those GTI figures. That makes this a great alternative to the GTI for a lot less cash. Going back to the Honda Civic Si and Acura Integra conundrum, in my opinion, they're both skippable compared to this experience. Sure, the Civic Si is less expensive, but it is a lot less car. Power, performance, interior niceties, things like that. And the Acura Integra, while it does come closer to the GLI in terms of its content, well, once you get the one you want, the fully loaded model, it's actually more expensive than this, leaving you wondering what are you actually paying for for that money? The only real hang up to the GLI as far as I'm concerned is actually the new Subaru WRX. Now granted, the GLI is much, much nicer inside. Though, I think the WRX has the performance advantage, especially with its standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. And for those who actually do experience all four seasons, that will definitely be a strong pull. Versus us here in Los Angeles, well, we don't really need all-wheel drive. Still, it really boils down to the personality between the two because they are so different. This GLI feels a lot more refined, while the Subaru feels rough around the edges, but it does feel stiffer and sportier as a result. If you couldn't already tell, if you need a vehicle that does a lot of things really well as an everyday driver, I'm a huge fan of this 2022 Volkswagen GLI. It's practical, comfortable, spacious, quick, and fun to drive on a winding road. Really all the hallmark traits of a good sport compact car. Clearly, I'm a fan, but I'm curious, what do you guys think about the Volkswagen Jetta GLI? Sound off in the comments down below and please let us know. Oh yeah, and if you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to the channel because it helps us out and allows us to do more fun things with cars in the future. I think that's all I got for you guys, so I will see you guys next time. Bye.